Hi, everybody. What's up, Red Baron? Hang on, Snoopy.
praise God, 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 praise God. do it a little faster in prison, but I do that and not one person ever realized that that was Amazing Grace because the first lead off they heard was the house and rising sun and nobody ever paid any attention to it except the Christians on the thing and everybody would, it was pretty interesting. <clears throat> I thought it was anyway, if you don't think it was interesting. My name is Big Jim Nolan. We're at RCBC. We're here on a third Sunday of every month here at the world famous Iron Horse Saloon in Ormond Beach. That's, right. That's north of Daytona Beach. Well, I remember I said Daytona one time, and boy, Big Steve was on me. Whoop! Yep. <laughs> I sure miss that man. Yes, we do. Uh, you guys weathered some of the chilliest stuff we've had here for a while. You know, you can come out and see us now on 555 8th Street, Holly Hill, every Saturday night at 6.30. We're there. You know, we've got Frankie, Frankie M and Bobby C and Helen M and Jimmy N. We'll all we'll, we'll be there you know, doing our, our, our thing with uh, Rex Allen Sill, you know, and you got, to, you got to be a, that's Rex A. <laughs> you know, and Rex will be here to bring the word when I get done making a fool of myself. And then, then we'll, we'll get all that done. But this is part of part of what's happened. I'm warming you up. <laughs> if I can warm you up, we'll call me Houdini. You know, nobody's going to warm me up. We'll get, you know, even Frankie's jokes won't warm me up. It's cold out here. Uh, Helen said to try this other song. This is one of these special plays. I don't know how this This little song I wrote. Actually, I didn't write it. It was a song that somebody else did one time. If you're looking for trouble, you came to the right place. If you're looking for trouble, just look it up my face. I was born standing up and talking back. My daddy was a green eye honking jack because I'm evil. My middle name is Green. I said I'm evil. So don't you mess around.
if you're ever in Daytona. On a Saturday night, you don't feel like drinking or getting in fights. And you're looking for an alternative place to be. Check out our church, it's called the RCBC, and we won't judge you. Lord, you can come out as you are. This church is your provider, but you can come out in your car. Somebody's gonna to show us what we're supposed to do. I told somebody that I've spent my life already proving how stupid I could be, and I was corrected, and they was pretty sure I could still do more stupid. So at least I know I've proven everything I needed to prove, and I don't need to ride from the cult no more. But you know what? It's great to be here. I want to welcome everybody that showed up today and those that are watching online. That you are at the very first. RCBC Outreach at the World Famous Iron Horse Saloon for the year 2023. You know what? No more old days, huh? Good, great days. They're coming. It's a choice you make. I used to have good and bad days. No more. I have good and great days now. Because God took care of all that past, that garbage. We need to leave the past behind. So with that, let's open a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for all that you do, for guidance, for your patience, for your grace and your mercy. We ask, Father, that you open not just our heads, but you open our hearts that we'll receive what you have for us. Reach us and teach us, Father God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, again, you know what? It's just great. It's a new year. New possibilities. New things. That don't mean that the world's going to have a bunch of great stuff happen. But you can. Each and every one of us can make a decision as to what we want. This resolution stuff, Frankie talked about it not long back. I was one of those people that decided 30 years ago before God reached me, I'm not making no resolutions this year. That's my resolution is not to make none. That way I know I could achieve what I set out to do. I also had friends that said they was gonna be in a kinder word a worse person than it was the year before, and I think some of them achieved that also. But you know what, whether you call it a resolution, an aspiration, or a goal, all of us should be reaching forward and not looking down. The past is over, I don't care how miserable your life might have been, what happened to you, it wasn't mama's fault or grandma's fault or whatever, you know what, it just happened. But the bottom line is, if you've accepted Christ, it's over. It don't happen no more, and you cannot move into the future safely, comfortably, or even get ahead very well if you're still dragging along the past. That past can be bad. The good old days? Yeah, what a joke. I don't know about you, but I remember some of my good old days. Not all of them. The good old days, most of it was trouble. If they were so great, why were we never satisfied? I hear people, oh man, I wish it was back in the good old days. Why, you hated them. Oh, and I used to party good and says, yeah, like what? So I don't remember. So there you go. The good old days. That don't mean you don't have some good memories back here somewhere in the past, but most of us talk about the good old days. It was trouble. Every night that we were able, and sometime during the day because we call in sick, we out looking for more. Better drugs, more booze, more relationships, sex, money, whatever it is, but we were never satisfied. We're always out looking kind of a good old day is it? I'm looking forward to the great new days, the ones with Christ. 
When he stepped in and turned my life around, man, I couldn't believe it. All hell broke loose. But that just gave me another challenge. You know, when the world throws an obstacle at you, what that is is an opportunity for you to find a new way to go through, over, or around with the help of Christ. So we need to leave the past behind, forget about the good old days, and let's move forward. What I remember about some of my good old days is that they always ended the same way. Empty, unfulfilling, unsatisfied, lonely, hurting, more guilty. My life was getting darker and darker until I started my good old new days. You can't run that past with you and you can't even get near. I won't go back and even get close to the edges. When I left that behind, I left it behind and I've never looked back. And there's a reason that in Luke chapter 9, verse 62, Jesus himself says, No one, I don't care how great you are, how much money you got, how pretty you think you are, no one, having put his hand to the plow and looks back, is fit for the kingdom of God. Now to me, that got scary. I wasn't afraid to die before I knew that there really was a heaven and a hell. But once I, I read things like this, it gets scary. I want to be fit for the kingdom of God. That doesn't mean we're not a bunch of mess ups. We all make mistakes. We all got problems. It happens. But too many of us still carry that past. I suffered. I suffered some pretty bad night terrors, if you will, all the way through my early teens. Every night. It wasn't once in a while. I can still remember parts of them. Every night until my early teens. Sometime during the night, I would wake up crying, screaming, terrified. All those finally went away. We carry a lot of that, though, and some of it we don't even remember drags us through to the future. And as we drag it into the future, it hinders us. It don't allow us to have the full potential that God wants for us. Life's a challenge, no matter which way you go. You can't sit on a fence. You can't be part of the past. Part of the old ways and be part of God's life. Because then, back in my day, if you wasn't loyal to one side or the other, you wasn't no good for nobody except taking the fall for something that somebody else did. Your words got to be solid. Got to be right. Make your yes, yes, and a no, no. So leave the past where it belongs in the past. You don't have to totally forget it because you want to remember where you came from so you know that you don't get too tempted to get close to the mud puddle to step back in. But you don't want to be looking back. You need to be looking forward. Some of that past that we carry is the hurt. I don't mean you want a broken bone, a black eye. You don't want that stuff just happens. You forget about that. You remember you had a fight. You might even remember you lost one or two. But you don't remember the pain. It's the emotional pain that hurts the most and it stays with you. But through Christ Jesus, we can let that go too. The memories. The failures, uh, maybe none of you have ever failed at nothing, but I've taken my share of fails. Although I realize I never really failed. Oh, I had many, many, many relationships. They did not work out. As God showed me, it wasn't necessarily a failure. I had businesses that didn't work out. And one of them I blame on the Gulf War. <sighs> my buyers wouldn't buy enough to know more. But you know, even those I didn't fail at, as long as you're moving forward instead of looking back, you haven't failed at any of this stuff. What you've done is found out many, many ways that something won't work. I found the way that does work, and that's through Christ 30 years ago when I said, yes, Lord. The old ministry that uh, I helped found and was director to, 22 years. That's the only time in my life I've ever had a permanent address that long or did something that I didn't fail at. And the reason was because I wasn't leading it. Jesus Christ was leading. It was God's program, not mine. We were in foreclosure, no problem. They asked me what I'm gonna do. I said, I ain't gonna do nothing. Well, why not? It's because it's God's deal, man. It's up to him, kick me down some ducats, man. I'm hanging out, but you better do something. And he did. One hour before the foreclosure and they sold our hotel. He come through with that last $100 bill. The rest was history. You know what, there's many examples of that. So it wasn't a failure. I found out that my way didn't work, and that God's way does. 
and it does for anybody that wants to. A lot of us have regrets, the things we should have done, the things we could have done, the things we shouldn't have done, scars from some of those pains, and just a lot of painful memories sometimes. But we can let those painful memories go, remember the positive ones, make a choice, that's the joy thing, make a choice. I don't mean bouncing around all the time. You know, last month here, I mentioned that God has offered, and a lot of us have accepted, the greatest gift that he ever gave to the world, his son, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Now then, if you've accepted that gift, and you haven't started using it, it's time. You know, it's kind of cool. Somebody gives you the best gift ever, and it's all pretty packages, man. It looks all great. And so you don't want to mess with it. So you set it up on your shelf. You don't do that. Somebody rolls in and says, hey, man, I want to bust it with this new Harley. Man, you need to just park it in the garage and forget about it. You could get out and ride it. With this gift that God has given you, we don't want to set it on your shelf. Open that package up, man. Look at it. Study it. It comes with an instruction manual. Now, you guys don't know what that is until after you've messed up. But really, there is an instruction manual. It's called the Bible. Study it, read it. That's the greatest gift ever, but we got to use it. If we don't apply it and don't put it to use, what value does the gift have that we don't use? He offers it. Some of us have rejected for many years. Some have accepted. But then, if you've accepted, open the box and use that gift. If what it's for, you can't run it out. Uh, again, you don't have no past. And in Philippians, Chapter 3, verses 13 and 14. It says, Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended. In other words, I don't really understand. But one thing I do. One thing. If you do this one thing, you're ready to move on to a great year. And this one thing that he did, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to the things which are ahead. I press towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Even he makes it clear, man. Like I said, the structure man will tell you, let the past go. The good old days are gone. Let's start moving on to the new days. New adventure, new things to see. My whole life's been one big adventure. Not always a good one. But the way it was, my wife used to get pretty upset in the early days. Oh, honey, I'm, I'm just going to take the scooter out. I'm just going to have some coffee. I'll be back. Three weeks later, I come back. I got lost a lot. Some of us have experienced my, I get out there and I see, oh, shiny, you know, going that way. I just kind of roam around. Nowadays I have a focus though, and a purpose. But we got to move forward and go for the things that Christ has for us. So we got a verse here that, that Pastor Frankie shared last night. First John 2, 3 and 4. It kind of sums up part of it too. You know, there's so many things in that book that lets us know we're not to live in the garbage, not live in the past, not visit the past, not have nothing to do with it. It says to even take and put off the appearance of evil. So if it even looks like you're in a bad place or doing wrong, you need to quit doing it because somebody's following you. They're watching everything you do. I used to watch these Christian people. Some of you may know what I'm talking about. They all pretty up there with their suit and ties and good stuff and judgmental things on people like me on Sunday. On Friday, they didn't notice that I'm sitting in the same bar strip club that they're in. And they're more twisted than I ever was. I knew who I was. They didn't. So putting off the appearance, if you're in a place that looks bad to somebody and you don't know who's watching, you need to be careful because you're leading somebody and the question that God may have for you, and it's one that I've wondered about myself, is which way am I leading people? When I put down my cigarette 30 years or 38 years, a free pass a day towards the end, I didn't ask for him to take them away from me. I said, give me the desire to let them go because I don't want to be a bad example of some kid that thinks it's okay. You know what? It's not the example. One of my pastors made it very clear. There's nothing in the book that says you're going to go to hell for smoking. You're going to smell like hell, but you ain't going to go there, possibly. But you know, it's a bad example. You're telling some child that don't know yet that it's okay. We need to make sure, like Frank was saying, we don't put on the illusions that it is okay. A little white lie? Hmm. Phone rings? 
no, 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 they're not here. You're telling these people, no, no, I don't. You know what? The little things are the ones that trip you up, not the big things. In today's time with all the cameras and drones and police and rape, you probably ain't gonna get away with robbing a bank. But you can get away with the little stuff, and all that little stuff adds up. And a wrong or a sin is one, 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 five. One, it, it's just hash marks. It's not greater or less. It has nothing to do with, I stand less than Joe does. I'm better than whatever. No, man, we're all equal. We're not richer, we're not poorer, we're not better looking, we're not bigger, we're not smaller. We have a soul, and the soul is what's important to God. Our next move on. So we need to keep moving forward. Getting into that. I read this. It was wrote by uh, Norman Dole. Because, you know, sometimes we have a negative outlook at ourselves because of our past hurt, because of the garbage that we dragged around, because of what people said or did to us. We may still be broken. It's okay. We all have issues. I don't care who you are. But I had people that come through our ministry that they'd been told they were dirt or garbage. They'll never be good enough for anything. They can't do nothing. They may as well fall over and die. I've been told that myself. Some of that by religious people. One of the great things about RCBC, we're not religious people. Relationship with Jesus Christ. Now, I'm not putting down the big organization. But the important part of all those where some have kind of forgotten is that it's a personal relationship between you and God. Not between me, not between the pastor, not between the bishop or whatever. A priest might be a good guy to talk to and get counsel from, but he can't save you. I can't save you. I can't fix you. I'm still broken. I'm still trying to fix myself or let God fix me. It's a personal relationship between you and Jesus Christ. And when you make it personal, now you got somebody watching your six, and you got somebody on your side that's looking out for you. I'm telling people that I used to think that I wasn't worth anything. I throw away. When I go up talking to one of them religious people, man, they tell me, go away, come back on Sunday, put on better clothes, cut your hair. You know what? Forget it, man. You don't think I'm worth your time? I may as well go out and check out, man. God thought I was worth it. He loved me when I didn't love myself, and he loves each and every one that's out here. But what this man wrote, for those of us that thought we weren't so great or worthless or wasn't important, it says some of the worst people in the Bible made the most positive impact. Saul wasn't one of the better people as far as the Christians are concerned, but he made an awesome positive impact throughout time. And then it asked why. I said because their story didn't end with their mistake. It finished with their comeback. You might feel like you're defeated, but your story isn't over. Victory is coming. And a lot of us know that we're more than a victor. We, we have more than a victory through Christ Jesus that empowers us to do all things we have conquered. It. Christ conquered the last thing we conquered, and with death. We have that same deal. We have the same ability and power that Christ gives to us in his Holy Spirit. We can do anything we want to do. We make it all the way through. But if you want to avoid crashing and burning, you want to avoid being hurt and disappointed or feel like a failure, remember, I think about it in different ways, whether it be in the car or on the scooter. You're out there, man, and you've got this beautiful bike. It's a wonderful day out and through the country, whatever kind of riding you like. This thing will go as fast as you want as you twist it on. Of course, nobody here would ever go about the speed limit, but that'd be your wrong, right? We, we only go to speed limit around these corners and through the trees. They're watching on camera, we gotta say that. So, we get out there though, man, and you're riding, it's a beautiful day, the weather's perfect, not too hot, not too cold, not real windy, the pipes sound good, the air is crisp, and you're smelling the rivers and the creeks or maybe over the ocean, and it's just perfect. So you twist the throttle on a little more, and then you start worrying about the man, he may be back there, come bust me. So you start looking in the mirrors. Now you're rolling along somewhere about the speed limit and you're watching the mirror to ride and you didn't see that old turtle crossing the street or the corner come around you're gonna crash and burn we can't be looking back through the mirrors and running forward at 100 miles an hour and think that we're gonna make it we've got to keep looking forward forget about that past 
If you're sitting here looking over your shoulder, you can't be seeing what's up ahead. And there's dangers everywhere, and it's getting worse and worse. We have to look forward and know that the temptation was talked about even last night. It's, it's going to come there, and it sneaks up. We don't even realize it's happening until it's too late, and we're halfway through the mud puddle again. Just be aware. Know that you've got the power to avoid it. You can make it through all things. Again, we all have issues. We're always going to have issues while we live in the world. And it's different. And just because somebody sins differently than you don't mean they're less than you. Some of us have come out of a deep pit. And we've come up to what some of the, some of the cream of the crop says we're still broken and not good. But they've never been down in that deep pit. They don't know how much of a struggle. You've risen farther than they have. I know people have been in church all their life. That's it. They just sit there. They've never been in a pit. They've never climbed higher. And yet they sit in judgment. Don't let anyone ever judge you. Man is, does not have the authority. We've all come from different depths of pits. And some of it is such a great struggle. Some said they would, were told they would never get out of their pit. But Christ does differently. He'll raise each and every one of us. Now all we got to do is lift your hand up and say, Papa, lift me up. I'm in trouble. I need you. And that's the way it works. So those of you that haven't accepted that free gift of Jesus Christ, I invite you today to start out a new year with accepting that free gift that was offered to you. In Romans, it lets us know in 3.23 that we've all sinned. I don't care, rich, poor. The man, all of us have sinned. And we've all fallen short of the glory of God. Every one. The wages of sin are death. And, and it's been made clear in the church all the time. I'm not afraid of death. I wasn't afraid of death in the old world. I'm not afraid of death in Christ's world. Not physical death. And that's the worst that anybody can do to you. It's my spiritual death that terrifies me. To go to that next life without being in the presence of God. I don't know how it would be like. But I think about them, some of them old stupid Mad Max movies and stuff. And that would probably be like a great time compared to what it would be without God. I cannot imagine what hell will be like, but I can tell you one thing. I do know that it is another life past this physical life. But the way out of that is in 10.9. Let's confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. Jesus Christ went to hell and back just for each and every one of you here today that's on there watching for me. All the way. He didn't stop halfway. He didn't hang out there in that garbage. He went to hell and back just so you wouldn't have to. And if you've accepted the day, you're in our area, come out to the RCBC church. If not, once you accept, make sure you find a good church or disciple and help you along the way because all hell is going to break through. You need the support. I want to let you know that, again, we appreciate you coming out to the outreach for RCBC. That RCBC Church loves each and every one of you, and so do I. And with that, I want to have Pastor Frankie come up here and give a closing prayer. God bless. Thank you, Rex. Man, I don't know about you, but that one sentence Rex said really hit me. It's, uh, aren't you glad that your story didn't end with your worst mistake? Amen. Amen. So um, there was a verse that was going on in my head. As Rex was talking, and it's found in 2 Corinthians 5, 17. And it says, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. A bunch of creatures out here today, amen? amen. If anybody be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are new. And whether or not we treat our lives like they're new is up to us. Because Christ has given us a new life. Amen. And regardless of what this world throws at us, when we're living in a new life, it's a whole different game. Something else hit me that I wanted to share with you this morning. You know, we came out. And by the way, I only rode in my car because I got to go to the store afterward. That's the only reason. But uh, something hit me this morning that I wanted to share with you, and that's, you know, when you're in the dark, 
is cold, and you're alone, and you feel like you're separated. But when you go out into the sun, you feel that warmth and that comfort and that joy because you're in his light. Amen. So as we leave today, I pray that we would be salt and light to this community and that we would live in the sun and not in the dark. Amen. Father God, we love you. We praise you. We thank you once again for your son and your word, how it instructs us. I pray as we leave out that we would take that challenge up that Rex gave us today, that we would live a new life, that we would stop looking in the rearview mirror and start focus, focusing on what's ahead. Because if we allow it, you have great things for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great week, everybody.